Hi there. This was something that happened to me back when I was going on 15 years old. It all seemed to happen pretty fast, but within those two days, I felt a lot of emotion and carried even more guilt and trauma afterwards. However, I feel like it's important to talk about in order to educate others of online safety. I am a middle child, with an older brother that had already moved out of home, an older sister that, at the time of this event, was a senior and was about to graduate from high school, and then I have younger twin brothers. The following is going to be describing my mental state at that time. I understand that it wasn't the truth now, as I am an adult and parent myself, but it's how I felt at the time. My brother was in college, so my parents did a lot of stuff to get him set up in his dorm. With my sister graduating soon, they were preoccupied with her, getting her ready for it, trying to schedule a graduation party and everything that involved. Then, my younger brothers were still infants, so, of course, they took up a lot of my parents' time and attention too. So in my eyes, I felt as if they had forgotten about me, or maybe just didn't require their attention when in fact, it was the opposite. I struggled with some of my school stuff, I had friend and teacher problems. There were days that I may have been picked on at school and just didn't feel good enough, but my parents didn't seem to care, or were too preoccupied to care. And so because of the distance between us and them taking a you're independent now and don't need us stance, I dedicated my time to the internet. I played games with my friends, we would go to different chat rooms or just share random videos. And when my friends weren't available, I would browse chat rooms in other public places. Don't worry, you don't have to tell me how stupid that was as a 15 year old. While I was in the chat rooms, I would share quotes to my favorite songs, especially if they expressed how I was feeling. And that's how I met Angel, or at least that was the name that he gave me. I had posted the lyrics to a song and he had finished them. We started talking from there about the bands that we liked, and the rest was history. We seemed to have a lot in common. He explained how he was a middle child of three. He felt similar to how I felt, and we shared a lot of interest and hobbies. He admitted that he was 17, though, and that he lived a couple states over. I knew Stranger Danger was still a thing, so I only gave him my nickname that my close friends used, not my real name, and just gave the state that I lived in. He never tried to push the subject of personal info, and I appreciated that. He just listened to anything that I had to say or complain about, and would try to comfort me. Over the next few weeks, I grew to love coming home and talking to him about my day. We both seemed to be getting more comfortable with each other, and when he said he cared about me, I fell for it. I had never been in a relationship before, so I was starting to feel like that was it. So I told him my real name, and I even added him on MySpace. Of course, when that happened, we knew what each other looked like. He looked exactly as he described. Dark, shorter hair with thin black glasses. He was cute, and probably more so because the way that he treated and cared for me he didn't even have many friends on MySpace, which made sense, because he explained how he was a bit of a loner and didn't have many friends in real life. But what really did it for me was when he started saying how pretty I was. He said that he saved my pictures so that he could look at them whenever he wanted, and how much he could not stop thinking about me. So when he officially asked me out soon after, I accepted. Now I was in my first relationship, and since we couldn't even meet up, I didn't really know how we would handle it. Life was pretty much the same except we had pet names and exchanged I love yous. 
and we also started making plans together, and he said that once he graduated high school, he was going to get his own place, as he was currently living at home with his mom, and that way I could move in with him when I graduated too. I loved it. The idea of being an adult away from a loveless family and having my own place sounded like a dream, and Angel was going to make it come true. So, I did everything that I could to make sure nothing stood in the way of those goals. Unfortunately, some things happened that were out of my control. As mentioned before, my friends and I were far from popular, so we were often bullied. However, I usually just let it go and just dealt with it. Until one girl said something that set me off, and I hit her. I hit her hard enough to make her fall back, and I just walked away, but she jumped on my back and made the fight bigger and attracted attention. We were both given in-school suspension, which just meant that we had to sit in the same room for eight hours instead of going to each individual class. We even had to eat lunch in that room, but my parents' punishment was just as bad to a 15-year-old me. I was grounded for two weeks. I couldn't leave the house, except for school, obviously. No phone and no extra fun things. They wouldn't listen to me when I tried to explain what led to the fight, only that what I did was wrong and that I was smarter than that and so on. So, I was confined to my room for those two weeks. However, my computer was a large desktop. It used to be my grandma's and she gave it to me, so my parents had no intentions of lugging it out of my room. So, I at least had access to that. And they also knew that I used it for schoolwork, so that's probably why I was allowed to use it. But being the person I was, I took it as a personal attack, and I unloaded on Angel about what had happened. To my surprise, he was enraged for me. He said my parents should have stuck up with me because I did it to protect myself. It only confirmed my feelings more about how my parents didn't care and how much Angel did. That's when Angel came up with the idea of me moving in with him now. I laughed at it, as if that would ever happen, or as if my parents would ever allow it, especially now but he convinced me that I didn't need their approval. He explained how, at the age of 15, I was old enough to choose where I lived, and I could even choose to continue going to school or drop out if I wanted to. But he said I could just go to the high school that he was going to. And, to be honest, I loved the idea. I wanted to be close to him and far away from my uncaring parents, so... With him adding a few more pros to the list, I finally agreed. He said that he had a car and a license and agreed to pick me up, but it would take a few days for him to get there. So I continued life as normal, as he instructed, so as to not alert anyone. I did tell a few of my friends about Angel previously, so all I told them was that I might get to meet him soon and would message them about it when I did. Angel emailed me one night saying that he was in the state, and we planned for him to pick me up at school the next morning, as I waited for the bus to school. My sister drove herself, but I told her that I wanted to take the bus that day. Sometimes I did, especially when I was in a bad mood, so she didn't think anything of it, I'm sure. My dad was gone by 6 a.m., and my mom left with my brothers before me to take them to daycare and go to work. I was typically the last one home when I took the bus, and so it worked out. I grabbed my two bags that I had packed with my clothing and some of the things that were important to me, and waited in the driveway with them. Then, the moment I had been waiting for since we started dating, Angel pulled into our driveway. I was overwhelmingly nervous and excited to finally meet him in person, but then it all came crashing down. The man that got out of the car was almost unrecognizable. 
he was far older than his picture. What hair he did have was black, but he was practically bald. He was overweight and wearing what I referred to as large grandpa glasses. I thought, what the heck, is this angel's dad? But when he spoke and called me his pet name, I knew what had happened. I asked him why he looked so different, and he just acted like it was a small difference. He said that picture was a year old and that he had gained some weight, but it was still him. He even seemed embarrassed at first, and apologized, but his voice was very soft and kind the whole time, which just reminded me of the angel that I knew. I was still nervous about it, but I figured that I'd come this far that I had to go through with it. So he helped me put my bags in the car, and I got in the passenger seat and looked at the house one last time. But soon after, everything would come crashing down further, and I would realize my mistakes. Angel said that we would stop at a hotel for the night, and then we would be back at his home the next day. I was still nervous and shy, so I talked very little, but he continued to try and communicate with me. The hotel that we stayed at was shady at best. We got in and there was one bed, and it wasn't long before he made his advances. Like I said, I had never been in a relationship, so the thought of doing something like that was overwhelming for me. I denied his advances and that only angered him. He practically threw a tantrum, punching and throwing things until he finally passed out. He demanded that I at least sleep in the bed with him, as I wouldn't leave the armchair, and I agreed, hoping to calm him down. I laid there until I knew that he was hard out, based on his drooling and snoring, and slowly got out of the bed. I knew that this was wrong. I knew who he was, was a lie, and he was not the person I was led to believe. And I knew that if I didn't get out of this somehow, I was going to be in a lot of danger. So I turned the TV up, hoping to mask any sounds that I made, left the room, and headed to the lobby. I remember the person at the front desk at first looking mean when we arrived, but I now believe he was suspicious of the grown man, checking into a hotel with a child. I told him that I needed to use the phone to call my mom, and I remember his face softening and asking if I knew that man. I told him no, and he immediately ushered me to the back office and gave me a phone. What I didn't know at the time was that he had already called the police. So, obviously, I'm okay now. My parents answered when I called in tears to hear my voice. Angel was arrested that night and questioned, and I got to stay in some children's room at the police station overnight. It was nicer than the hotel, at least. My parents picked me up the next day, and when I was expecting to be scolded and grounded longer, they hugged me like they had never hugged me before, and cried when they saw me. They of course knew that something was wrong when the school said I was absent, but that I wasn't home either. I told them everything that happened and even explained why I did it, and they explained that I was wrong and that they never stopped loving me and so forth. I realized I was wrong, and I learned that I needed to be more open about my feelings so that they knew what was wrong and what they could do to help. Angel obviously wasn't his real name, and he was not 17. He was actually in his 30s. He was charged, and he went to prison, which is why I won't share my location as I don't want to be associated with this any more than this story, but there you have it. Even at the young age of 15, I was catfished, before I even knew what that meant. I absolutely learned my lesson, and realized it could have been a lot worse. I stress internet safety to my nieces and nephews all the time, and will do the same with my own children when they are old enough to venture onto the internet alone. The 
This happened to me in late 2019. That year, I was at my lowest that I had been my whole life. Between multiple life and work events, I struggled daily, but after doing some soul searching, I stopped feeling sorry for myself and started making the changes I wanted, or more so needed, to live a better life. I was working on getting a better job, one that I could actually show my value in, while also working on myself. I got a gym membership and I was spending a lot of my free time there. I was happier with myself, dare I say it, even more confident. But another part of my life I wanted to fill was someone to spend my time with. So I started a few dating sites to try and get myself out there. I was still overweight, no way to hide that, but I was working on it and making good progress. So I put on a flattering shirt, spent some time on my hair and makeup, and took some good photos for my profile. I can't speak for men, but I know a lot of us ladies like to look our best in pictures, so of course, I went a little extra on it. I didn't lie in my bio though, claiming I was 180 and super slim or anything. I just wanted a little extra glam to my photos. I got a few guys to reply, some were willing to talk but would ghost me when I declined an immediate hookup, or some would just immediately start off wrong, if you know what I mean. But then there was a guy named Clayton, or Clay, that contacted me. He was cute, his picture showed him standing in the back of a pickup wearing some dirty jeans with a big goofy smile on his face. You could tell he was a little heavier himself, which I didn't mind. I was working on the same thing, so. And the fact that he wasn't this sharp, clean guy in his photo made me think that he was probably more laid back and flexible. We started talking, and we seemed to have a lot in common. We talked as if we had known each other for years. It was just that easy and natural. I was pretty happy when he asked about getting together for dinner, and I agreed immediately. We scheduled it for the upcoming weekend, and I could not wait. Except there was a problem. I have a pretty serious skin condition called psoriasis that will randomly flare up, sometimes without much warning. Most of it is on my legs and arms, sometimes my back, but the worst of it comes up on my face. It can be pretty red and inflamed, and the only thing I can really do for it is use a good lotion or moisturizer and hope that it calms down. But the problem this time was that it flared up the worst the night prior to the date. There was no way that I was going to cancel so close. I thought that that would surely make him think I wasn't interested, and it was very rude to do so. So instead of doing my full makeup like I liked to do, because it worsens the flare-up, I settled with a good moisturizer, good eye makeup, and a nice lipstick to hopefully distract from the awful patches on my cheeks and chin. I talked myself up before I left, and told myself that I just needed to be confident, and be willing to talk about it if he asked. It's unfortunately something that happens, and there's not much that I can do about it. We met up at the restaurant, and I found him waiting outside. He was wearing a nicer pair of jeans and a nice sweater. He looked great, and I was thankful that I wasn't too over or underdressed. I was in a sweater dress and tights trying to cover up my arms and my legs. So I felt like we both fit in, and together, well enough. I approached him with all smiles and he returned the sentiment, shaking my hand. We went in and got seated, and as we tried our best with small talk, I could sense the awkwardness in the air. I assumed it was just meeting in person for the first time. It made sense, right? But then I started to notice that he was talking less and less, and was constantly looking around the restaurant. I don't know if he was trying to look for someone or what, but he definitely seemed to be distracted. It was starting to look less like he was just shy or awkward and more so disinterested in the date. I was pretty upset. 
dealing with this most of my life, I knew that it had to deal with me. It had to be the mess that was on my face, right? Or maybe just me in general. He was no longer interested. That's just the person I was. So, when the check came, I was planning on paying, not wanting him to have to pay for me, but he immediately told the server it was two checks, so I just paid for myself. But I was surprised when he asked if I wanted to walk around a local park. He sounded sincere when he asked, so I loosened up thinking maybe I had just misread the whole situation. Maybe I was just being pessimistic, and he really was just shy. We both drove our own cars and I followed him to the park. I got out, smiling again while his smile seemed fake. We started walking, his hands remaining in his pockets, so I kept mine at my sides or holding the strap on my bag. I tried talking to him, but he would give short answers, if he replied at all. Then, as we rounded the trail, he finally brought it up. So, how can we look different from your photos? I was pretty embarrassed. He definitely noticed my face, which only made me want to look away from him. I explained to him that I just had foundation on to smooth out my blemishes. I explained my skin condition and how I couldn't do the same thing in my pictures because of it. I even apologized and joked that I should have asked him to reschedule, but I didn't want to disappoint him. He didn't laugh, he didn't smirk, or anything, which told me he was pretty serious about this. I didn't hide anything on my profile. I had both headshots, as well as full body photos and I was the same size as I took them after I started losing weight, but I was still clearly around 250 pounds. The only difference was that I was now wearing less makeup, but I guess that was a pretty big deal to him. I was already pretty mortified, and knowing he was fairly upset, I slowed down, told him I would just go, and apologized for wasting his time. But then I felt him grab my arm, tightly, making me turn back around to look at him. His face was now fairly red and angry. You catfished me. This is the problem with you women. You think you can just get away with this and we're just going to accept it? He called me some pretty hurtful things, each time yanking my arm towards him, but I would pull back. He finally let go of my arm, but it made me lose my balance, and I fell to the ground. He immediately stood over me, calling me more names. I was scared and upset, obviously crying, so I yelled at him that I got the message and to just let me leave. But then he dropped to his knees, trying to restrain my hands, and also kept grabbing my face to make me look at him. I didn't know what he was planning to do. He was obviously angry and very violent. Why not just tell me off and let me go? Why do all this? But then, my hero. There was a couple walking the same path that witnessed this. The man immediately ran over to us, shouting and Clay jumped off of me, now trying to intimidate the other guy. The girl tried to slowly walk around to get me, so I stumbled to get to my feet to meet her halfway. Clay shoved the guy a few times and that was about all that happened. The other guy told him to walk away before he knocked him out, and he finally did. Walk away, that is. The girl hugged me, and they asked me if I was okay and stayed with me until the police arrived. I told them everything that happened, and they then followed me home. I showed them Clay's profile, but all calls were going straight to voicemail. They said that they would follow up on it and keep me updated as I wanted to press charges. No surprise, though, his profile on the site was gone the next day. That was easily one of the worst days of my life. I was working so hard to improve myself. I had already lost 25 pounds and was feeling better about myself and life. I put myself out there again, and because my face wasn't what it was on the profile, I was assaulted, berated, and made fun of. Why not just end it at the restaurant? 
why would you continue with it? Or even, why not just call it out there and let me walk away? Sure, I guess I'm not completely innocent since he said he felt catfished, but that wasn't my intention, nor did I deserve the way that he treated me. I started to shut myself in after that, and then with 2020, I didn't even have to explain myself to anyone for it. I am doing better these days. I've dropped more weight after gaining the quarantine weight, and I've gone on a few dates since. My profile now includes information on my skin condition, and while it may have swayed some people, I've also had some messages asking me about it, and even a few that said they had the same thing. The police were able to track down Clay, but he fled, most likely the state, so I believe there's now a warrant out for him. I was always worried that he would come around and find me, but I hold on to the thought that he truly may not be in the state. I just hope that he never hurts another woman like he did me. Back when I relied on dating apps, I matched with a girl named Caitlin. Her pictures showcased her long, dark blonde hair, bold green eyes, and a dazzling smile. She lived in the next city over and worked at a local hospital. That was actually something we shared. I was an RN at another hospital, so we shared some similar grievances and the parts that we loved in the field. After a few weeks and when our schedules finally lined up, we agreed to meet in person. We decided on a little brunch place, as we were both morning people, and I got there first to get us a good seat. I sat at the table and would occasionally look up from my phone, expecting to see her walk in at some point. I didn't see a pretty blonde that matched Caitlin's descriptions, so... I was a bit startled when someone walked up and said my name. I looked up to see someone that looked similar, but wasn't quite what I was expecting. The woman had shoulder length and very dark brown hair, freckles, and dark eyes. I probably stared at her longer than I should have been, then she held her arms out for a hug and said that she was Caitlin. I apologized and stood up to hug her and ushered her into the seat. I could tell by her facial features that this was the same person, same nose and eye shape. She even talked with the same cadence and personality, but she was clearly different. I tried to let it go, thinking maybe she just never updated her photos from the app, but the thoughts still lingered in my mind. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, my mouth is faster than my brain and I finally asked about it. I told her that her hair looked nice, but that it was different from the photos, joking that I almost didn't recognize her. She laughed and casually brushed it off, explaining what I had assumed. She simply said it was an older photo and that she recently decided to change up her look out of boredom. I laughed with her and again complimented it, but something still didn't sit right with me. Yeah, she could have cut and dyed her hair, but how would she explain the different eye colors and freckles? Who would wear colored contacts on a first date on a whim? And her freckles were definitely real. They weren't fake, so... Photoshop? To cover your freckles? It was just all strange to me because the woman now sitting in front of me was just as attractive. So why fake a profile photo? Regardless, I tried to not be an ass and dwell on it, and still give her a chance. But as our date progressed, she started acting odd. She would go from being very talkative and giddy, and then become very hands-on and flirtatious. Don't get me wrong, it was nice to see her so interested in me, I guess, but I couldn't figure out if it felt rehearsed and faked, or if she was just really excited. It was as if we knew each other and hadn't seen each other in some time. And once again, as the conversation slowed down, I took it as my chance to ask. I joked with her about how the date seemed to flow so easily, 
It was as if we were friends, and I then asked her if we really did know each other. I was expecting her to laugh and smack my arm or something, but she broke eye contact with me and with a nervous laugh just said, Oh, <laughs> um, not really, I don't think. And then quickly tried to change the subject to something else. That made me a bit suspicious. So I moved on, but kept trying to place her somewhere in my earlier life. Once we were finished, we started heading out to the parking lot, and she again started getting really flirty and making suggestions. We met up for brunch. I had no intentions of taking a girl home in the middle of the day. I had a few reasons, but it just seemed... weird. So I just told her that I had fun and that I would love to see her again. It wasn't a lie. She seemed happy at first, but then I could see her disappointment. She made comments about how she wasn't good enough for me. I tried to comfort her, but wasn't sure what to say because I barely knew her. Then she made a comment about how she knew I liked brunettes more, so she had tried to change. I was confused. How would she know what I liked? We had just met. I didn't mention that on my profile because it wasn't that big of a deal to me, so I asked her how she would know that, and then she turned to anger. She said, So you don't even recognize me? That is so like you, Jason. What the hell was going on here? I felt like I was part of some joke that I wasn't let in on. I told her that I didn't recognize her and specifically mentioned how she didn't even look anything like her bio anymore. So, she slapped me and walked off. I stood there dumbfounded by this whole thing. I thought I matched with some random blonde woman. A dark-haired woman with freckles showed up and I was supposed to recognize her? Which one? I just went home thinking about it the whole time. I went back to her profile and really tried to study the way she looked, the words used in her bio, anything I could to figure out the answers to this test that I obviously failed. But I found nothing. But to my surprise, Caitlin messaged me the next day. She apologized for how she reacted and said that it wasn't my fault and that she would love to see me again. Yeah, I was a little hesitant on that one. I did apologize as well and said that I wouldn't mind the same, but that I needed to know who she really was. No more secrets. That was not the way to start a relationship. She agreed, and after seeing the dots starting and stopping multiple times, she finally responded, and said that we went to school together and that's why she was so excited to see me. But that she overreacted and that it wasn't a big deal. I thought, okay, high school was over 15 years ago, so forgive me for not remembering everyone I went to school with. But I did apologize for not recognizing her, and agreed on a second date. I assumed maybe she was willing to explain more anyways, and we could just reminisce. I didn't mind possibly dating someone from my old school days. We set it up for the following weekend, for dinner this time. I have an older sister by two years, and we'd been up talking one evening when the subject of school came up. It reminded me of my date, and I started telling her about it, wondering if she maybe remembered someone named Caitlin. I didn't tell people about every date I went on, so this was the first time she'd heard about it. She said that she didn't recall the name at first, but... And then I described what she looked like. She then mentioned how the dark hair and freckles sounded like my old high school girlfriend, but her name wasn't Caitlin. It was Mercedes. She wasn't wrong, though. Mercedes had dark hair and eyes and freckles, but surely it couldn't have been her. Why would she use a different name? We broke up because we kind of just grew apart. We dated for part of our freshman year through our junior year. It wasn't anything crazy or dramatic. If I saw it was her on the site, I still probably would have said yes. We were adults now, and probably completely different people. My sister said that she would think about it more, pull out her yearbooks, 
and let me know if she figured anything out. In the meantime, Caitlin and I chatted occasionally throughout the week, but she never gave me any other ideas of who she was. Then, my sister called me back. She mentioned a girl that she saw in our yearbook, and it made her instantly think of Caitlin. Unfortunately, the person she's telling me about, I wanted to never have to deal with again. She, throughout my junior and part of my senior year, was basically a stalker. She followed me around at the school, screaming how much she loved me. She would call my house all hours of the night. She followed me into the boys' restroom at school and even tried to tell my mom that I had gotten her pregnant. I never even really talked to this girl. We had one class together, and she always just stared at me. However, she had two classes with Mercedes, and she was always mean to her. But her name wasn't Caitlin. At least, not her first name. I started looking for her on Facebook, and sure enough, I found her profile. But she was going by her middle name, which was Caitlin. My stalker had managed to match with me, and I fell right into it. And when she immediately spotted me, she must have changed her whole look to look like Mercedes. Who does that? I knew that I couldn't let this go on. To me, she obviously hadn't changed, so I called it off. I sent her a message using her first name and told her that I didn't think it would be a good idea to continue. She came unglued. She confessed how much she loved me and always had, how I just needed to give her a chance, how it was meant to be since I matched with her. I told her it was a mistake and how she kind of set me up. That did not go over well, and let's just say that cued the stalking all over again. I ended up having to file a restraining order again to get her to leave me alone, and I became a bit more cautious with who I matched with online. However, after a while, I did actually reconnect with Mercedes after all this, and it's safe to say that we've become decent friends again. So that, my friends, was a collection of some terrifying catfish stories. For those that don't know catfishing, and I believe the most appropriate sense of the word never comes to this, is basically trying to get with somebody through distant dating methods like online dating or dating apps, and not being the person in the profile. I think that was obvious from these stories, maybe not so much from the person who uh, Clay, the the person that met with Clay and Clay said that they catfished him. Cause that's not quite how it. I mean, she didn't catfish him intentionally. It just it was a yeah. Clay was a jerk. Um, my point is, catfishing is basically setting up being one thing, and then whenever you show up to the date, you're not that thing. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's also fishing for catfish, but not in these stories. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the stories. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing. And if you feel ever so bold, go down below the video and leave me a comment letting me know how you're doing, how things are going, and what is up with you today. You can also join Patreon or memberships, get early access to content like this, or all the content that's coming out in March. I have big plans, and I'm making them happen. So far, we're about halfway through the month as far as planning goes, and it's working out really well, so, yeah. Um, you can also do a super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel. Never expected, always appreciated. All that said, friends, hope you're having a beautiful weekend. I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And of course, until next time, my friends... Much love, and sleep well.